Let's clear a big confusion in this video. Which one should you pick? Front-end development, back-end development, or full-stack development? Now it's important to pick the right thing in 2022 and beyond because this literally defines your career in programming, but it's not like one size fits all for everyone. So keep watching this video and we'll explore what thing you should explore out of front-end, back-end, and full-stack. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So I'm gonna start off with the very basic definition of everything, which we'll discuss. So feel free to skip this section if you already know what front-end, back-end, and full-stack development is. But of course, I recommend watching this anyway. We have these three names over here, and um, they're very popular, right? People say I'm a front-end developer. People say I'm a full-stack developer at this startup and so on. So what does that even mean? Let's start with front-end first. So when we say front-end developer, at least on this channel, I mean front-end web developer. That means you are a developer who's coding for the person who's seeing imports and the screen and the stuff on the screen, right? So these layouts, the widgets, the animations, the transitions, the crawl bar effects, all that stuff is you. It's all you as a front-end developer. The confetti, the pop-ups, all that stuff is you when you're working as a front-end developer. Now with front-end, what you have to do is work with a lot of browsers also. And in most cases, a single piece of code pretty much works consistently across multiple browsers. But sometimes you might run into edge cases and sometimes you might run into issues where, you know, browsers are misbehaving. So as a front-end dev, your fight always remains to just, just keep on, keep the browsers together in a way. Backend development in contrast is a little bit different because when you're a backend developer, you're actually programming systems, right? And these systems are owned sometimes virtually, sometimes even physically by you, the developer, the endpoint. There is no element of surprise. For example, in this case, some user might have a Chrome extension which blocks certain parts of your website and, you know, the user cannot use your web app properly. Doesn't happen in backend because you are controlling the backend server fully so you know exactly what permissions your server has what data goes in, what data goes out and so on. So this is more of a, you know, a way of communicating with the front end in a way and, you know, obviously getting back data as well. But this is more critical piece because this interacts with your database as well, right? So you want to make sure that this is critically secure. This is not vulnerable. People are not able to hack into this and so on. So as a backend developer, not only, I mean, that applies for frontend as well in a security context, but even more so in a backend development world, that not only your job is to make your code nice, but your job is also to make your code secure, follow best practices around security and so on. Now, when we talk about full stack developer, I mean, this is something which includes a combination of both, but a little bit more, right? Because this includes an additional information that you know how to hop from front end to back end and back end to front end as a developer, right? So imagine you're working on some sort of project which requires you to code both front end and back end simultaneously. So you're creating an endpoint, you're going back to the website, you create another endpoint, you go back to the, to the front end and so on, right? So you're working parallelly between back ends and front ends and you know how the data layer is flowing, how, how the data is communicating, you know how the database is working, that's how you extract the data, you know how the caching works, let's say with Redis and so on. You know a lot about both the places you know which feature breaks or does not break in a specific browser you know that your end-to-end -end testing is done with playwright so you have that power that you know you can test into multiple browsers you know a lot of stuff right in both the cases and you know a lot of stuff which is blended right this data layer this bridge of communication you know this really well a lot of times what happens is that when front-end developers are working as front-end devs they know i mean ui and stuff and everything but they don't really understand how the network request is happening. You know, what is an API? What is a WebSocket? What is a TLS handshake upgrade? Not TLS handshake upgrade, just a upgrade to a WebSocket connection. What are event streams? Things like these. I mean, as a front-end developer, you don't even need to know this stuff, right? It's not that it's a requirement. Similarly, as a back-end dev, you don't know a lot of stuff how you know react works for example how to work with css properly that's the biggest complaint of backend developers and so on but a full stack developer should and has to know all of this aspect because you are the one who's jumping between front ends and back ends now the big question should you learn full stack should you learn back end should you learn front end well here's my suggestion if you are learning full stack i mean i would learn full stack if i was a solo player right maybe you are in, still in school maybe you are in college maybe you are just exploring stuff 
right? That's the place where you want to become a full stack developer. Why? Because if you just stick to front end or if you just stick to back end, you will limit your horizon to the things you can do with web development, with programming. You cannot do everything if you're just a front end developer. You cannot do everything if you're just a back end developer. You can only do everything if you are a full stack developer because you need both the layers. It does not mean that you have to be great at both. It just means that you have to be willing to work with both layers simultaneously. Now, when do you choose to be a back end and a front end developer? This is again, this is this is your choice in a way. Let's say if you're working in a team or a company and you like UI, UX, and you know, just the interfaces part more than the logic building. I mean, not to say that front-end does not have logic building, but front-end definitely has more of UI, UX and how things should look and feel like than building, let's say, a complex caching logic or some sort of rate limiting or something like that. So if you're more into that, then you should go for front-end. And if you're, I mean, more into the logic part and you're more into security and databases and stuff, then you should go for the back-end path. But again, it does not mean that if you are working in a team, you cannot be a full stack developer. You very well can be. I mean, all the developers working in Codam are full stack. I'm not even hiring for front-end and back-end at the moment. So that's that's the thing. But yeah, it depends a lot on you as a person as well. What's your preference? What your What's your choice? So for example, if you see Codam's full stack learning path, we actually cover a lot of front-end in the initial modules. Then we cover a lot of back-end and we have a bunch of projects involving front end and back end right which are like intermixed between these two things as well so the idea for code dams full stack learning path is to make you a full stack developer but you might as well cheat a little and just do front end and go off your way right you can just do the front end part just start applying for the front end jobs you can just do the back end part and start applying for the back end job you don't need to know css and stuff like that for becoming a back end developer and that's completely fine you don't have to you just can just pick this and you know off you go to a back end development or if you're a solo fighter then of course you can learn everything become a full stack developer and you'll be on your way so for codam we do have this full stack learning path up and ready i mean for a few months now but we'll also be introducing the front end and the back end learning paths very soon on codam and consider these learning paths as mini self boot camps in themselves which includes the projects the practice parts the content of course the community part but of course 100 times cheaper than your traditional boot camp at least in us right so in us it could go up to almost like 15 to 20 K, what I have seen in a traditional setting of bootcamp for six to eight months. In India also, I think it's it's probably 10 times cheaper because I have seen people paying one to four lakhs rupees, uh, which is which is like a lot of money in India. Um, so it's 10 to 50 times cheaper in India and up to 100 times cheaper for US people. So, I mean, why not? Why not go ahead and try this out on your own? But anyway, we'll be launching these to very soon if you're interested in full stack you can of course go ahead and start working with right away but yeah i mean i mean just to assure you that we have a lot more work to do on code dam on the content part on the practice part on building these mini boot camps part and it's all coming this year so yep that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you like this hopefully you learned the differences between front end back end and full stack and you are more clear on what you have to do i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Codedamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.